Hello, it's Matthew from Matthew North Music here. Now, this video is all about this. It's about teletext, and it's about teletext on the BBC Micro with the original Acorn BBC teletext adapter. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I got from using various bits of modern technology to get a very old bit of technology working on my trusty BBC Micro. Now, it wasn't easy. A few things went wrong along the lines. But as you can see, eventually I got it to work. And this is how I did it. This is our basic kit of parts. We have a power supply for the Raspberry Pi. We have the Raspberry Pi itself. We have a video cable to get the video out of the Raspberry Pi into a composite format. We have an SD card that we will have our Pi software mounted to. And very importantly, we need the internet. The Raspberry Pi uses a slightly unusual four pole, three and a half millimeter jack plug. And it has audio on the tip, which I think is the left, and then the right is on the first ring. But then the next string here, you would think would be the video, but it's not, that's actually ground. And the video is on the sleeve. So you actually have to wire this sort of back to front as if it was gonna be a conventional four pole connector for something like a mobile phone. Now you can buy a mobile phone four pole connector and then get an adapter, but it was just as easy just to buy the connector and solder it up. So we've got the core of the cable going there to the sleeve for the video, and then we've got the ground here. Now there's one additional piece of hardware that we require, and that's something to modulate the signal coming out of the Pi to go into the analog tuner of the BBC Teletext adapter. And that's where this comes in. This is a very nice Panasonic VHS machine from the mid nineties. These were very popular here in the UK and they were one of the best video recorders you could get. What was great about this particular machine was that you had a record level control here as well as having stereo VU meters here. So these were very good for recording sound. And I actually did use this particular deck for recording audio back in the day. Anyhow, I can plug this into the back of the video recorder and it will then output it as a modulated RF signal, which can then be plugged into the back of the BBC Micro Teletext adapter. Well, this is the BBC Micro Teletext adapter. And the case, as you might think, is roughly the same diameter as a BBC Micro itself, obviously not as wide. And there were various peripherals built to this size specification so they could sit neatly by the side of the BBC Micro. Now these devices were not cheap at all and they were mostly out of the price range of most normal consumers. That included myself and my family. The only interface that I ever had was for a joystick. It has this cable attached which goes into the one megahertz bus connector underneath the computer. The same socket that you'd use for the Music 5000 audio system. Then we look at the back of the Teletext adapter. It has an on off switch. It has an aerial socket for plugging in a standard aerial that would have just gone to the wall in the old days. And then there's four tuning dials. And this was for what we had back then for terrestrial analog television stations. You could then tune each one in and then you could select which channel you wanted within the software. The first thing we have to do is some preparation using a PC. Now, the heart of this system is a piece of software called VBit2, designed by a guy called Peter from Gloucestershire. Now, what we need to do is we need to get that onto the Pi, but the first thing we have to do, as his wiki says on the Bit GitHub sorry, website, is that we have to install the operating system for the Raspberry Pi and it's called Pi OS, and it's very easy. Well, first thing we just do is download it. So we're gonna download that to the computer. Won't take long. There we go. Choose OS, Raspberry Pi OS. Choose storage. Now, I need to get out my brand new SD card. I bought a 16 gigabyte SD card, which is more than we will need for this, but it was at a good price. And fortunately on my computer I actually have a card reader that I bought the other day and put in which works very well. And uh, we can just pop that into the into its little slot. 
and then it should pop up as a device, it's already popped up as a device, so we go choose storage, and it's this one here, generic SD, MMC, USB device, and then we click right, yep, and we just press that button, and uh, it will just download what's needed and write it to the card. Well that took about 10 minutes to do and now it's all done. So I can now remove the SD card from the SD card reader. Continue and I can close that down. Now if we look at the wiki, there's this bit here and it says uh, installation of VBit2. An installation script provided to set things up for you from a terminal console or window enter. We have to type all of that. Now that's something we have to manually type in. So I'm just going to leave that up on the screen. Here's our Raspberry Pi then. This is a Raspberry Pi 2. And I also got this quite nice little plastic case for it. The case wasn't very expensive. It was only a couple of pounds. And the first thing we do is we pop our little SD card into there. And that's in place. And we then need to connect things to it. Now I have to unplug my keyboard from my PC because that is a USB keyboard, so I should pop that in place. We then have the internet, which is coming in on this cable here, so I'm going to pop that into the network slot there. And then we need to get this onto a screen. Now, my monitor that I use for the BBC Micro is just a, you know, a 12, 13-year-old TV. And it also has an HDMI input, so I can plug the HDMI into there so we can see what we're doing. And then the last thing we need to do is to plug in our power, which is just on a micro USB power adapter. And it's actually a branded um, Raspberry Pi adapter, there's a slot there. So let's pop that in and then we'll go into the world of the Raspberry Pi. Well, there's our Raspberry Pi that's currently booting into its operating system. Okay, the world of the Pi seems to be alive. Uh, press enter for next. Okay, I just grabbed a USB mouse off my machine that I have next door. And uh, so we're in use of Kingdom British Time Zone London. Use English language. Click next. Setting location. I wonder if I can do this without an account. No, it needs to have an account. So, username Matthew. Enter password. Confirm password. Next. Set up screen. Update software. I don't want to update the software because I've just installed it hit restart okay now i need to type in this script and to do this i need to have all the correct lettering so it starts with one of those ATVBit2 slash master slash get VBit2. All right, let's see if this works. Ah, it's working now. Ah. So, uh, yeah, my typing is pretty terrible. Anyhow, we'll just let this run. Right then, this is our um, configuration program, and uh, it all seems to be working, so I'm going to click OK. Yes, I want CFAX. And uh, now it's downloading a load of CFAXy stuff. There are other teletext options available, but I'm just going to stick with CFAX for now because, after all, that's kind of what I'm most nostalgic for. Uh, if we go into options, run VBit2 at boot. That means that we can then um, switch the Pi on and it will just run it. And if we go to um, select service, CFAX, CFAX is selected. Um, go start VBit2. 
Now it was at this point that I realized there was a piece of code I needed to modify in the Pi. Now this piece of code is to make sure that it puts the video out of the composite output and not default to HDMI because the later build of Raspberry Pi OS is all based around HDMI. Now you have to use the terminal program to edit the code. Um, there's a link on the Teletext page that tells you the code you actually have to block out and it's very simple it's literally one line and you have to put a hashtag in front of it to mirror it out. Now you can't edit this with the text editor on there you have to use the terminal which is a bit of a fuss but there's plenty of documentation online on how to do this even I was able to work it out. There we go it's working I have got teletext back running so this is actually running on my television set in my bedroom and I've just used the modulated output of the Beeb to do that. Next thing I'm going to do now is plug into the BBC Micro. It's all a little bit messy here, but as we've just seen, I've now proven that by using this VHS machine, we can get teletext onto a TV. And so now we're going to use the cheese wedge to hopefully display teletext actually on the BBC Micro. On the BBC Micro, the software to run the Teletext adapter is actually on a ROM. Now, I did blow this onto a ROM when I first bought this cheese wedge adapter just to make sure it worked. However, I've since copied it onto the IFL ROM RAM board. And if I type in star ROMs, we can see that our Teletext is right there. So if I go star Teletext, this will open up the teletext drum and it's already gone straight to BBC One. Um, if we press the shift key and we say press F0, then we get our tuning menu. Now, what I have to do is go to the back of the teletext adapter and manually tune in. And this control here is our tuner and we have to turn it as far anti-clockwise as possible, I think, until we get right to the end and then we can turn it clockwise. Well, as you could tell by that, I wasn't having much success in tuning in, and, and here's why. If we look at the, uh, the cable, it's actually come disconnected from the, the demodulating circuit. So I'm gonna resolder that, and hopefully we should be back in business. Okay, well I've been at this a little while now. Now this is our, our tuner bit. Now I assume down the bottom here, anti-clockwise was the lower register and the top bit was the higher register, but actually it's the opposite way around. Now one thing that's quite good about this is as you turn the wheel, it actually re reacts quite quickly and it's very sensitive, but as you can see there, it's sort of flashing that it's got teletext. There you go, it's, got, it's actually grabbed a little bit of teletext. So this thing is actually working. I've just got to get it tuned. Okay, it's still very intermittent. And by intermittent, I mean very intermittent. But I have managed to get it to more or less work. So yeah, they have it 40 years on from when it was, you know, new technology as it were. We have got Teletext working on a BBC Micro. Literally after I did that piece of the camera, I just leant on the RF cable and everything seems to be working. I've got a hunch the main problem wasn't the tuner, it's actually the socket that the aerial's plugged into. So I'm gonna hit the space bar now we're going to see what happens. There we go. BBC Southwest is on the BBC Micro. If I type in 161, that will give us our top story, which is quite a personal one to me. Because it's about a former work colleague, dear old Gordon Sparks. He was a great guy. He um, loved Plymouth Argyle and he loved punk rock and he loved status quo. And that was his thing. Yeah, as I wiggle that lead, it is changing. If I type in 162, let's see what happens. There we go, page 162. 
It's working. It's absolutely working. It wasn't those sliders. It was literally the socket. And this is brilliant. Um, so the Southwest weather's on 402. It's going to 402. There we go. It works. It works. Looking at the RF socket a little bit closer, you can actually see that it's actually been bodged in and glued in. That's not original, I don't think. And it's got this like really iffy bit of wire that was also disconnected at the other end. So I think it will be prudent of me to replace that with a decent quality RF connector so that it can be used properly. Well then, I don't mind telling you I actually thought this video was going to have a bit of an unsatisfactory ending and I'd have probably just ended it more about just the Raspberry Pi being able to access teletext for a normal television set. But I'm pleased to say I'm glad that I did get it to work on the Beeb because that was the main intention for it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.